Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com, and this video here is going to be part two of my Nobody's Game Start walkthrough in Kenshi. So where I am right now is in the town of Heft, and where we left off at the end of part one was all the way down here in the town of Black Scratch. So essentially what we did in part one is make a whole bunch of money in Black Scratch, buy food that we need, buy or uh, save up for any companions that we need, also buy any companions we need in Black Scratch. We also um, got a pack mule in Black Scratch since they have a um, animal vendor. And we basically just stocked up on money, uh, raised whatever skills we could. Stuff like field medic is pretty easy to raise when you're there. Laboring is pretty easy to raise since you're like right next to a mine. And there's tons of stuff you can do there. However, the downside of Black Scratch is there's no reliable weapon merchant and there's no reliable armor merchant. So in order to get weapons and armor for your characters, you're going to have to leave. Uh, or in order to reliably get weapons and armor for your characters, you're going to have to leave. Also, the area around Black Scratch is, how do I describe it, not the best for leveling up, I guess would be the best way to describe it. The reason for this is, around Black Scratch, you're going to be, ha you're going to be finding a lot of Reaver enemies, which are enemies with stats like in their 40s to 50s most often, and you'll also find Grass Pirates, which are more your level, Grass Pirates only have stats in, I think, the 30s. Low 30s is what they are. So they're a bit more easy for you to take out and manageable for you and your team. However, the Reavers, um, they're going to just be a handful, really. And the one thing that really, really sucks about the Reavers is they will enslave you when they wipe you out. So you have to keep that in mind, and you have to basically be on the lookout for things such as that. Because if you get enslaved, and also the Reavers, the enslavement isn't like around the Empire Cities. If you get enslaved by the Reavers, they're going to put your characters into combat, because the slaves fight with the Reavers in combat. So it's, it's, it'll be easier to escape, since they kind of take you out from you know the Reaver base into the world, and you can run away when they're fighting. But still, being... it's it, the it's not a good idea because you're likely going to lose r limbs on your characters and then you're going to have a really tough time going anywhere with your character missing limbs so uh when you're leaving black scratch what i would actually recommend you do is hire a mercenary like you see here these mercenaries i'm going to be hiring these mercenaries in heft right now because i want to raise my character's toughness a little bit and other combat stats i just bought some armor for my characters i got uh let me pause it so I don't waste my mercenary time. Samurai leg plates are probably the best leg armor that you can buy for your characters. The reason for this is they give you 100% coverage of both legs and 50% coverage of your stomach. Um, you won't have to wear boots if you're wearing these because they give you 100% coverage of both of your legs. So you'll be able to wear wooden, wooden sandals instead, which will increase your movement speed, which are phenomenal. They're uh, one of my favorite um, feet slots in this entire game. And uh, as far as if you if you guys want a whole list of all of the different armors that are worthwhile to buy, just check my website, almarsguides.com, in part one of my Kenshi walkthrough, as well as uh, the nobody's walkthrough that I have. I usually go through the different armors that are worth buying. Uh, samurai leg plates are one of the better heavy armors you can get. Black plate jacket as well as white plate jacket are some of the better chest pieces you can get for medium armor. Here's the uh, white plate jacket. Um, also, I like to buy this iron hat for helms because it doesn't give me any negative, uh, whatever you would call it, detriments, but that's basically the same thing as negative. Like, there's certain items that come with skill penalties, like you see here for the samurai leg plates. You can get a better helm than this that comes with skill penalties, but I don't like it, at, at least at this point in the game. Also, I would probably recommend you wear iron hat no matter what when it comes to using a, uh, crossbow character because the perception will help with them and they aren't going to really be needing the extra tanky helm slot that you would be using on a melee character. On a lot of your melee characters, I do mostly uh, only recommend you use uh, heavy armor and meet, well, you're gonna use medium armor when first starting out because you're not gonna be able to run around with heavy armor that reliably. So you're gonna be using primarily medium armor until you get enough strength to more more or less reliably wear heavy armor at which time you'll be able to uh switch almost exclusively to heavy armor because it has better protections 
Although heavy armor will have more skill penalties, so it's just something you have to keep in mind. So essentially what I am doing now, and what I want to do now, is raise my toughness. Uh, raising your toughness is best around the Empire Cities. Hang, the whole zone of Hang is a pretty good area to raise your toughness because you've got outlaw farmers there. You also have uh, skimmers. However, skimmers can travel in packs, which is a bit, it can be a bit of an issue. Um, if you don't have a group of mercenaries protecting you like I just bought. That's the reason I got this group of mercenaries protecting me is because I wanted a safe quote-unquote way of raising my toughness and it seems like over here we have a uh, Interesting we have a pack beast just chilling He's broken as aimless so that's interesting I think I'm actually going to attack this pack beast because see it see how he has the pack on his back He might actually have loot and I do not see anything else around here So that's what we're going to do actually let's save it first Attacking we will get a little bit of a um, reputation hit, but it doesn't really matter because um, The guards for or the Western Hive isn't one of the major factions in this game, so No pack beast stop stop with this There we go Come on have loot have oh man He's one of the ones without any loot, but that's okay. I guess we still got a Garu backpack and other things Let's see how much of a faction hit I took Western Hive. I didn't take a faction hit probably because nobody seen me and I attacked a uh, animal instead of an actual hiver. So what we're looking for is skimmers and outlaw farmers to raise our toughness. Here's with skimmer, he's kind of out solo. The only thing that is unfortunate about fighting this skimmer is you can see this manhunter pack over here. Or no, that's outlaw farmers. I can tell by the he heads they're wearing. Where where'd the manhunter pack go? Well, there was a manhunter pack over there, and if they uh, catch you when you're unconscious, and apparently three more skimmers spawn when I attack this pack. If the um, manhunters catch you when you're unconscious, they will enslave you. Same with the slave traders, so it's kind of very, very important. You be very careful while raising toughness in an empire-controlled area like this. Slavery in this game isn't the end of the world if it does happen to you. But you should really, really, uh, and you can also raise a lot of skills when you are a slave, too. So keep that in mind. There are benefits to being enslaved in this game, but it's a bit of a pain in the butt to escape slavery, especially if you don't have characters that are outside of um, the slave camp. Because if you, if you have characters outside of the slave camp and you can bring your characters inside the slave camp food, you're going to be able to much, much more easily escape. If you can't bring your characters inside food, it's going to be very difficult to escape because the slavers will keep you mostly malnourished. And uh, your movement speed is greatly reduced when you're malnourished. So the chances of you actually successfully escaping are going to be significantly lower. What is this go What is this over here? Tech Hunters? I can probably hire these guys to guard me based on the fact that I can talk to Crunch if I wanted to hire them. But I don't because I don't want to spend another 4,000 cats for protection when I already have protection. Essentially, uh, the first part of the game, it's going to be like this when it comes to raising toughness. I strongly recommend you, uh, you have at least one mercenary group with you when you're raising your toughness skill. What is Tamara running so slow for? Ah, that's why he's heavy. I strongly recommend you have at least one mercenary group with you to protect you when you're raising your toughness, especially in Empire Zones, because you need that extra padding as far as being captured as slaves go. There goes my pack mule. It's funny, the, uh, the ragdoll physics in this game, they can be a bit bonkers. My pack mule's fine flying over there, though. He's already basically fully healed anyway a lot of my characters are getting knocked out here which is more or less exactly what I want because I'm trying to raise their toughness uh, you can raise your toughness halfway easily in black scratch as well the only thing though is your chance of limit amputation is going to be a lot higher there than it is in an area such as this what is that pack why is he running over there
So some of my characters don't have medic assigned, so we're going to fix that. Bard, you have no med kits, so we're going to fix that. So let's loot these corpses. And it, we're probably going to need to do a, take a break from combat because a lot of my characters are incapacitated and injured. Usually I think I got like maybe two or three, uh, two toughness, maybe three toughness per fight. Depending on what is he running by. Slave hunters? They don't really look like slave hunters. They look like slaves, <laughs> if I'm being honest. So once all of our characters get knocked out like this, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to stand here and uh, wait for them to recover. Some of them, anyway. Uh, if I see manhunters or slavers heading in my direction, the first thing I would do is this. I would start picking everybody up and uh, getting ready to move them to a safe location. Technically, we can do that right now. His arm is busted. What about Ridley? Your leg is busted. So characters are... Enough of my characters are injured to the point of where I can't carry everybody. Did that skimmer just get back up? Yeah, he did. And like I was saying before, you can raise toughness outside of Black Scratch, although I would recommend you only fight the Grass Pirates. Usually that usually when Grass Pirates show up to Black Scratch, I'll leave my characters outside messing with the mine and fight the Grass Pirates because the Tech Hunters will uh, save you from death and they will also heal you sometimes uh, if the Grass Pirates knock you unconscious. We can fight these Garus too. Let me... Uh, let me look around and make sure there's no manhunters moving in our direction, because if there is, then I won't fight the Garus, because I need to move. No, it doesn't seem like any, so we're going to fight the Garus. I want their leather and meat, too. So, Lovey got knocked unconscious, Eastham got knocked unconscious. Ridley got knocked unconscious, one hit to the head, just immediately out, because her head is already, there goes Cragstone. He's flying. So funny. There goes Bard. He's flying. All of my characters. K.O. Just like that. And apparently the mercenaries didn't do jack shit to help because the mercenaries are like running around and still uh... So apparently I hired a band of mercenaries that are just basically completely useless. I've never had mercenaries not actually help before when I get into a fight like that. And they did the same thing with the skimmers. They, uh, like, stayed all the way back, and they, like, very, very minorly inched forward uh, as my character was running towards them. So I, I don't understand why they, uh, why they are so broken. But I will have to keep that in mind. I will have to be more cautious. And basically, all of the characters that are wounded right now, I guess I'll have to carry back to Heft. Or, sorry, yeah, Heft. I'll have to carry them all back to Heft, and then we're going to have to basically rest in that town. Because if the mercenaries aren't going to help me like this, at least they're healing me, I guess. That is a plus. But if they're not actually going to help me fight, this is not good. It's not a good situation to be in. So we're basically just going to turn on turbo speed and sit here until more characters become unconscious uh, again. Actually, a lot of them are in recovery coma, so we would be here for quite a while. Let's see who can carry stuff. Almar, your left arm is almost? Okay, good. You can carry. Ridley, you're kind of limpy, but I don't have, uh, I don't have any other options as far as carrying people go. Let's see. It's going to be a while before she becomes conscious. I need to wait until the negative 22 on her head goes away. So that's not going to uh, happen soon. May we? Minus 12. Minus 36 for Holtberg. Minus 20 for... Oh, okay. Already looked at her. 
tomorrow. Tomorrow is probably the one that's closest to coming up because he's negative six. So we'll just wait until tomorrow because I can't carry him anyway. All of my other characters are basically uh, already carrying somebody. Once tomorrow gets up, I can pick up Lovey and we'll be good to go. Right now, I'm basically just doing some strength and athletics training because I have nothing else to do in the meantime. Some of my characters are encumbered, so they'll be raising strength. Otherwise, they'll just be raising athletics. What is this? Sand ninjas? A few of them have bounties, which I kind of want to collect. 4,000 cats apiece. That would give me two days. Two d or, uh, that would technically give me four days worth of mercenary protection. Okay, we are going to attack them, but we're going to do it like this. There you go. Finally, my mercenaries decided to help. Thank you, TY. Okay, so. Any limbs lost? Nope. Now, all we need is a few more characters to basically become conscious. And then, uh... Actually, you know what I want to do? Please don't... Okay, good. Where's the ones with the bounties? He's playing dead. He's got a bounty. There we go. So, heft. Bard's encumbered. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up these guys and then I'm going to run them into town with just two characters. Interesting. Apparently my characters uh, automatically heal somebody when I pick them up like that. Uh, Melee, you can hang out here because I need the mercenaries to stay here and protect my characters. Bard and Heastem, these are the two with the bounty. So what I am going to do is we're going to create a save. And we're going to run these two back to town. A lot of my characters are coming out of their comas, which is excellent. Now we can finally start moving around again for the most part. Let's see. She's out of a coma once it gets negative four and then negative. So Holberg's going to be unconscious for a while. Let's pick him up. And what about... No, she'll be conscious in a second. Ridley, negative 12. That's not too bad, I guess. East Ham, get down here. Okay, so what we need to do, what we need to find is the police station, which is over here. Some strength training too, carrying lugging the body through all of town. Alrighty. Let's see. There we go. One bounty. Let's see how much a reputation it gave me too. Two. Not like I really care about the United Cities having a uh, liking me. It's one of the one of the lesser factions in the game that I uh, like. Holy Nation, I'm not a big fan of either. There you go. 
So there you go. I turned in those two bounties. That's a quick 8,000 caps just like that. Okay, she's up. Who are they fighting? Uh, one of the sand ninjas. Tough little bugger, huh? Okay, let's pick up Ridley and head back to town. My characters are injured enough to where uh, I think it's best to basically head on back to town. I would uh, actually like to show you guys the trick for raising toughness extremely fast in this video. However, it's not really that good in this zone. I would have to find an out. I would have to find an outlaw farmer camp basically in order to reliably do it. Which I think I might do after I, uh, was that a noble hunter group? You have to watch out when you're in the, no, it's not a noble hunter group. When you're in the empire zones, because sometimes noble hunter groups walk around and they will outright attack you. And the people that are guarding them have stats in like the seventies. So it's really, really, really hard to, uh, defend yourself against them and if you get wiped out by them they'll pretty much just enslave you anyway so it's a mess empire areas are not friendly to new players so the trick for raising toughness very 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 quickly in kenshi is finding a camp of monsters that won't kill you if they uh knock you unconscious and repeatedly basically playing dead and standing up from playing dead so here we go here's an outlaw farmer camp to the south right please be outlaw farmers peasants empire peasants I don't know if they will attack me outright I guess we'll find out. We need to uh, have our characters a little bit away because we don't want our characters to be in the same aggro radius as those. All right, let's save again because I don't know what's going to happen here. I might actually have to attack. And this is going to be the, the easiest way to raise toughness in the entire game if this works. I really would like an outlaw farmers area instead of an empire peasants, but let's see what happens. I'm going to attack them with jewel and uh So let's see. When jewel gets knocked unconscious, I'll be able to show you. There we go. See how she's playing dead right now? Now, when you stand up from playing dead, in Kenshi you get toughness and your characters sometimes will just keep falling back down and be going uh, basically knocking themselves unconscious and you can repeatedly get up and play dead and play dead and play dead and play dead uh, worst comes to worst if you don't get that bug where you can where your character keeps playing dead and then knocking themselves unconscious you can still stand up anyway you just have to wait until your character gets knocked unconscious again and then wait a few seconds for the you know whatever to fade so let's say see. see my toughness 12 17 toughness right now from standing up like that she'll get knocked up, knocked out again there you go knocked unconscious again now i need to wait like about a minute and a half okay now she's going to heal herself and then play dead Playing dead, healing herself. Now watch, 17 toughness, 21 toughness. And then she just knocked herself unconscious because she uh, tried standing up and did whatever it failed. Playing dead, stand up, 25 toughness instead of 21. 
So she didn't knock, her, knock herself unconscious automatically when she stood up. Instead, she got into a fight, and now she has to be knocked unconscious like that. Playing dead. 26 toughness right now. 29 toughness after standing up. Playing dead. So I didn't get any toughness for that one. Okay, she uh, she's going to need backup because right now her leg is really, really messed up. Negative 92. So if uh, if any enemies did uh, with a cutting weapon hit that limb, they would probably amputate it. So that's no bueno. What I want to do is let's send in uh, Arwick and Bard. And you can only do this trick on one character at a time. Uh, I mean, technically we're about to do it on two, but it you really want to do it on one character at a time. You don't want to leave characters. Uh, or you don't want to run multiple characters over to the same location and do it at the same time. And the reason for that is because uh, if you try to do something like that, what will end up happening is... Your characters won't stay, they won't play dead reliably because they have somebody out, they have an ally nearby. So usually they will immediately stand up with the ally expecting to, you know, win or fight enemies or whatever it is. So you can only reliably do this method on a, are the skimmers going to run right into Arwick? You can only reliably do this method on one character at a time. And really, all you need to find is like a, a camp of enemies, like you see here where the enemies are um, not immobile, but they don't leave the area. That's the, that's the main selling point of this location, is all of these Empire Peasants don't leave this area. They just walk around here aimlessly. Outlaw Farmers would be perfect for raising toughness like this. Uh, Dust Bandits, if you're around the hub, is another good one. Really, any enemies that won't... Uh, sell you into slavery when they knock you unconscious. Won't eat you when they knock you unconscious. So now we're starting it with Bard. It's okay, so Bard's down. Just fast forwarding some time. Okay, he's going to play dead and heal himself. I usually wait until the characters heal themselves before standing back up, just because. Okay, so 12 toughness. 16 toughness after standing up. Come on, hit him in the head. Knock him unconscious. 17 toughness from that fight. Playing dead. And watch, maybe 21 toughness. 20 toughness. Knocked unconscious again. And recovery coma. So, let's switch back to our other characters. And we're going to basically move in and uh, save Bard's life. Or just get Bard out of there. And if the outlaw farmers attack my other characters, then that's fine. We're going, we'll just kill them all. Or the uh, empire peasants, sorry. They're not outlaw farmers. Tomorrow, why are you moving so slow? Ah, because your inventory's full, that's why. And of course you're carrying somebody. I'm sure that plays a pretty big role too. Alrighty. So, we technically don't need uh, the mercenaries to protect us when we're doing this sort of thing. We just need uh, to be careful. Since we can only do this on one character at a time. Okay, who 
Who's Almar carrying? Ridley? Is Ridley? Yeah. Alright, we're going to send Almar in there and basically do the same thing. say Almar is committing a crime when I attack them. That's silly. Come on, stop hitting my arm. There you go. So Almar's at 20 toughness. Like, before, we just need to wait until he gets done playing dead, and then he'll stand up, and then we basically raise toughness again. Let me wait for him to heal himself, that way I don't end up dying from blood loss or some shit like that. One more hit in my t stomach when I get knocked unconscious is going to be a bit of an issue. Uh, because he'll enter recovery coma, coma mode. I got five toughness though from standing up there. There we go, chest unconscious again. So long as he's not going to be in a recovery coma, I should be able to uh, play dead and stand up one more time. Let's see, what does this toughness say? Okay, negative 29 is where my knockout point is. So, negative 9 and negative 13, I'm fine. Okay, hopefully it gives me 30 toughness. Yes, 30 toughness. Knocked out again. Let's see. 13 and 22, so we're still good. Let's see what our new knockout point is. 32. So because our stomach is only 21 and our chest is only 11, we're good. Playing dead. Okay, here we go one more time. 34 toughness now. Got knocked one, one hit before I even stood up. They knocked me unconscious, which is exactly how I like it. Just whack me over the head with the pole, knock me unconscious immediately again, and I just wait until the next time I'm conscious. Stand up, get into a fight I can't win, get knocked out again. It is very uh, thirty-seven toughness. It is very. You know, tedious doing it this way. Okay, chest negative 45, let's say. Yeah, knockout points negative 38, so he's going to be in a recovery coma. Let's see, bard. Did my mercenaries kill these two? Oh, yes, we did. Ah, rebel farmers. I'm actually going to loot these real fast. I, uh... Rebel farmers will walk around with wooden sandals right here. Which are, uh, some of the best in slot footsies you can get in this game. Their armor is not worth looting, as you can see. It's only, like, I mean, it is, I guess, somewhat. Outwall Farmer. Give me your wooden sandals, all of them. I love me some wooden sandals. They give you a great boost to athletics, which is uh, phenomenal. All right, back to... Uh, huh, my mercenary captain got knocked out. Negative 54 for the head. Yeah, he's going to be in a recovery coma. Uh, 
Okay, so next person that's going to raise my uh, toughness is Lovila. Come on down to the Price is Right. That's interesting. He talks to me and asks if I need a uh, if I need a uh, somebody to join me. And it didn't even give me an option to uh, have him join me. All right, so we'll engage her into combat. Hopefully, they uh, hit my head and knock it unconscious. Ooh, come on, don't! Oh no, there goes the arm. Unfortunate. So that is always an issue that can happen: is you can lose a limb like this. And this is not going to be good. See how she's knocked out for 3,000 seconds? So that's basically uh, as close to a game over sort of thing that you can get for her. Let's see. What's her toughness at? 21. I can't remember what her toughness was when she first started, but I got to get over there, patch up the limb. Of course, that's always going to be an issue when you're doing something like this, like raising toughness. Don't worry about losing limbs in this game, though. Usually cybernetic limbs are significantly better than regular limbs. You just have to uh, spend the money to buy a good cybernetic limb. That's funny. I guess that skimmer was really injured. Because otherwise, that skimmer probably would have wiped out, like, this entire camp of peasants. Recovery coma? Why? Oh, negative 29. Okay, your toughness sucks. That's why. Arwick is carrying Jewel. What else are you carrying? Okay. You got some garbage in your inventory. That's why you're moving so slow. Jewel, let's see. Her left leg is really badly messed up, so she can't... Wait, you can walk. That's interesting. Another way to uh, raise skills that would be very good too is to uh, load your characters up with a bunch of heavy crap so they get skill point reductions and then do uh, toughness training like this. You can see Empire Peasants get their own faction. And we haven't lost any uh, faction with Empire Peasants yet. Not like it really matters if we do, because they're not an important faction anyway. They're just these low levels that walk around this area. So Arwick, oh man, he doesn't have a med kit. That's not good. Well, look, he's playing dead almost immediately. So, um, almost immediately, so we're going to stand up. And uh, 20 toughness. Playing dead. Stand up. So he got, he's up to 24 toughness right now. And that's probably all I'm going to be able to get out of him as for right now. Because he's bleeding and he doesn't have a med kit on him. Playing dead. 28 toughness. Playing dead. 30 toughness. Okay, he, fell, he went unconscious immediately again. This is what we're looking for. Playing dead. Stand up. Okay, there you go. And that's... A, probably all we're going to be able to get out of him. I'm going to need to get in here and um, heal him pretty quickly. Let's see. Stomach and chest. Are they still going? Okay, they're going up. Playing dead. One last time. Come on. Cool. He fell unconscious immediately. If he keeps, if he keeps going unconscious immediately like this, then I'll be able to raise my toughness very, very high. See how he's going unconscious before enemies even hit me? His toughness is 42. 44. 46. 48. 49. Okay, they hit me that time, I think. Hmm. 
should I re should I renew the contract the contract with the mercenaries? Questions, questions. Uh I guess I feel kind of uncomfortable not renewing it because I know I'll be attacked here. Where is their mercenary captain? Because that's who I need to talk to in order to renew it. Mercenary. Okay, the mercenary captain is still in a recovery coma, so I can't renew it with them anyway until he fully recovers. So back to Arwick. So he got up to 53 toughness, which is actually pretty damn good. That's a uh, that's a level of toughness that you you would want for like a uh, almost an end game character. What we need to do though is we need to run in there and uh, oh that skimmer is about to wake up. What we need to do is we need to run in there and save people's lives. Didn't even see this outlaw farmer body up here. Let's see. Ridley. Slave hunters over there. That's not good because they're going to come over here. So Ridley seems to be my fastest runner. Arwick can do this one more time. So let's say playing dead. Ooh, he's going back into the, the same loop that he was in before. Sixty toughness, sixty one toughness, sixty two toughness, sixty three toughness, sixty four toughness. Probably like a uh, half a toughness point at that time. Sixty five, sixty six toughness. This is the exact loop that you want when doing this. You want to get your character stuck in a loop that works exactly like this. We're going to move those characters inside town because I don't want them to get hurt since the mercenary guild contract ended. We'll have to swing through here at a later time to pick up my characters. 68 toughness. Sixty nine toughness. Now we have basically more toughness than most endgame characters will get. 70 toughness. Getting to 70 toughness is really, really difficult in this game. Unless you use a method like this. expecting that to happen he stood up and he didn't so that uh that was basically the end of that loop that i was stuck in and he got up to 73 toughness from uh what was he at but you can rewind the video and check but he was probably pretty darn low toughness probably in the 20s if that prior to the video and he just skyrocketed all the way up to basically uh what toughness you need for like an end game character so let's find a mercenary in here Okay, that's the mercenary team that I just had hired. Do I want to hire them again? I guess I really have no choice because I want to go over there 
to get the bodies, and I need to be safe. bunch of wooden sandals around here because when uh, enemies get converted into slavery their uh, shoes are taking off taken off so I can run around and loot those wooden sandals for all of my characters I'll pass them out once everybody gets back to town okay your full inventory of wooden sandals so long as you're using those samurai leg plates and uh, You get 100 protection of both your legs, so you can use wooden sandals and benefit entirely from the athletics boost. So long as you're wearing leg armor that gives you 100% protection of both of your legs, you technically do not need to wear shoe le uh, feet armor because your legs already have 100% um, coverage. So there's really no reason to uh, go over 100% coverage. You won't benefit from it. Probably didn't need the mercenary guild for this. Notice how the second my characters got over here, these uh, the ones that were unconscious stood up immediately. That's why you want to do this with only one character. Because you don't want your characters to automatically break out of playing dead. Every single time immediately. This is technically not what I wanted to happen, all of my characters to kill all of these Empire Peasants, because now I can't use this camp anymore. Let's see. Empire Peasants. Okay, cool. I didn't lose any faction with them yet. So after uh, after I get done this video, I'll probably go to another camp. I'll look for a um, Outlaw Farmer camp, if at all possible, and we'll probably use that camp to raise toughness on more characters. I need at least, I would say, five to six characters with good enough toughness to go out and explore uh, especially some of the harder zones let's see this skimmer the skimmer is dying which means he still has loot on him poor empire peasants But anyway, that's really all there is to it. This is uh, this is the best way to raise toughness in Kenshi. If uh, and like I said at the start of the video, if you guys want more information that wasn't shared in this video, such as which we weapons, armor, and all of that stuff that you can buy, that uh, really really good for you guys, then check out my website almarsguides.com. The main thing uh, I'm covering in this video here is raising toughness, since that's such a big such a big step of really what we have to do in the game at this point because you won't be able to go out and explore reliably if your toughness isn't high enough to take some hits from enemies as you're out there exploring but anyway that's pretty much all there is to it now that i'm back in town i basically just need to go afk and wait for my characters to heal up a bit or i could buy um some beds at the inn and stay at those beds if i wanted to but i'm just gonna go afk instead and uh yeah, hopefully this video helped you guys out. Hopefully it shed some light on how to raise toughness and make your character stronger in Kenshi. If you got, if I forgot anything, got anything wrong, or you guys have anything to add, please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, I love getting the feedback. And like I said before, if this video helped you out, be sure to like it because that helps me out. And aside from that, I will catch you guys around in probably part three of my Nobodies walkthrough for Kenshi. That'll most likely be the final part walkthrough for the Nobodies. Because at that point, then I can just merge it into my uh, traditional Kenshi walkthrough, which covers, you know, everything in the game. Aside from that, though, I will catch you guys around in future Kenshi videos. Peace.